Tomahawk TV News, Montec County's only newscast, coming at you from Nocona High School. Hello, this is Senior Morgan Dyer, the head anchor at Tomahawk TV News. Every new school year brings about new beginnings, including new teachers, new classes, and new students. We would like to extend a warm welcome to the new teachers and students at every Nocona ISD campus. Now, there are some new changes and opportunities that the high school is offering this year. Seniors can now paint their parking spots. The school is offering an AP Biology class for students who are looking for a more challenging course. More dual credit college courses are being offered and some more new exciting things. Not to be outdone, the Tomahawk TV News has added some more interesting segments to complement the growing success of the broadcasting class. This year, viewers will be entertained with new segments such as consumer reports, music and movie reviews, and video game reviews for all of our gamer viewers. Also, there will be a special redneck consumer reports for our viewers who are dying to know more about lift kits, Yeti coolers, and the latest and greatest country innovations. And don't forget to keep an eye out for our skit segment, where we will be reenacting school events and happenings. Another new addition to Nocona High School is team teaching. This is where Miss Oduno and Miss Perky are co-teaching the physics and chemistry classes. We were curious, so to find out more, Louisa Ojeda and Kiana Hayes went out to learn more. This is Kiana Hayes interviewing Ms. Perky and Ms. Odeno about their team teaching. We are here with Ms. Odeno and Ms. Perky in chemistry. And the first question I'd like to ask is what courses are being team taught? Currently, uh, Ms. Odeno and I are going to team teach IPC, physics, and chemistry. Do you have any plans or goals for team teaching? Um, biggest thing is just that the, the students are able to um, learn from both of us, you know, having two different teaching styles and that we have fun. And that's all what this year is about. <laughs> we have heard there are more than 30 students in one class. How do you plan on splitting them? Uh, currently, we are in the process of splitting and dividing based off of uh, what we see fit per lab, per activity, and just making sure that we have equal opportunity for everyone. How are the labs going to work with team teaching? Well, um, depending on the lab, you know, as to if it's going to need water, you know, different things like that as to where we're going to go. But, you know, so far we've, we've got about half here, half in her room. And so we'll, we'll kind of go it on a lab to lab basis and, and learn as we go along. So <laughs> how do the both of you feel about team teaching? Honestly, in the beginning, it was nerve-wracking because we just didn't know what to expect. And as we've actually approached it and been in the classroom together, it's been really entertaining, very fun to see how she teaches, how I teach, and just meeting in the middle with hopefully our best qualities. What are some benefits of team teaching? Um, I think the biggest one is that students, you know, have their different learning capabilities and, and she, you know, teaches one way and I teach one way. Some of the students are more comfortable with her, some are more comfortable with me. So, I mean, they get the advantage of having that choice, you know, in the classroom and, you know, being able to hear it from two different perspectives and, you know, and, and plus they're going to get a lot more one-on-one -on -one because there's two of us instead of just one running around all over the place. So, I think it's going to work out great. So far, what's your favorite class to team teach? Currently, I think it's IPC. Second period. I think so. Uh, the, the students are just, they're, they're fun. Um, they're quiet. It's just, it's getting to know them and seeing them uh, mature as young individuals. Do you feel the students will achieve more with the team teaching? I do. In a way, I mean, it kind of goes back to what I said earlier about, you know, the, the different teaching strategies and everything and to where they do get that option of hearing it two different ways, being repeated, you know, and, and being in a comfortable situation, whether it's with me, her, both, whatever. So I think they're really, go it's going to be good for the uh, students. Okay, the last question is, Ms. Perky, will you miss teaching biology? 
Honestly, I will, but we brought in the best uh, candidate possible. We brought in a new teacher that's going to take over and take it to better and bigger heights. Well, thank you, guys. Thank you, ladies. That seems like a great addition to the school. Karen Gibbs has a new segment for us entitled Movie Dumpster. This is where he will review movies from various time periods. Welcome to the Movie Dumpster, the segment in Tomahawk TV News where I tell you what's worth seeing and what's not. This week we'll be tackling Josh Trank's reimagining of Marvel's first family, the Fantastic Four. Now I will not give away any spoilers just in case you, the audience, would like to watch it, even though in the case of this film, no you don't. To preface this review, 20th Century Fox and Marvel have been conflicting over the film rights for some time now. This film was made so Fox could retain the rights. So I'm going to say this about that decision. It was awful, and for one major reason. It was rushed. The direction was off, the acting was so-so, and visually for a Fox Studios film, the CGI was mediocre. For those who are fans of the beloved storyline, save yourself the heartbreak of cringing through this monstrosity where Doctor Doom's name isn't even Victor Von Doom. So in short, the Fantastic Four was ultimately a bomb and 20th Century Fox should just give up and give the rights to Marvel Studios, creators of such successes as Iron Man, The Avengers, Guardians of the Galaxy, and most recently the surprisingly good Ant-Man. I give the Fantastic Four two tomahawks out of ten. Thank you for watching. Thank you for the review, Kieran. I will make sure to check into that movie. Hello, Nocona High School. I'm Cole Jackson, and welcome to this week's edition of Tomahawk Sports. In local sports news this week, last Friday, the football team finally broke their 13-game losing streak with a win over Alvord, also making Coach Keck the winningest coach in Nocona history. The volleyball team was also in action Friday night against Sanger, and unfortunately did not come home with a win. This week, volleyball plays Lindsay here Tuesday, September 1st and will be headlining Nocona's famous tournament, Buckle Up for Lane, this Thursday. The football team will be playing here this Friday against Munster. Last week, I also got a chance to interview two cheerleaders. The first thing I asked of them is if they were excited for the first pep rally. I'm super excited for football season. I've been waiting for it ever since last season ended. It's my favorite time of year. Yes, I am. I'm excited because each football season we get to create new memories with our team and we get to ride the bus down there and sing Christmas carols sometimes and we sing the Cheetah Girls and we just get to have a really close bond with each other. Next thing I was intrigued about is how long they had been preparing for the football season. Well, we had tryouts right before spring break and then once we found our teams, we um, had camp in June. And then we practiced all summer and Monday nights, Wednesday nights, and this morning was our first Friday morning practice at 6.30. Um, we've been practicing since June. We've had, we had our camp at the beginning of June, and then we practiced every Monday going over each of the cheers and our dances, trying to perfect them for this year. Last, I asked about how they thought the first pep rally was going to go. I think the first pep rally is going to go great. It's going to get everybody pumped up. We have some girls that haven't done a pep rally before, so they're a little nervous, but overall I think it's going to be great. Um, I hope it goes well. If not, something always happens, but we're trying our best to make it the best for y'all, and we just hope everything goes right. The pep rally went great, and it was easy to notice how much hard work our cheerleaders put into it. And national sports news. Monday, no settlement was reached in Tom Brady's suspension case. So as of right now, Brady will be sidelined for the first game September 10th unless the judge rules in his favor soon. Robert Griffin III and the Redskins seem to be on shaky terms once again and most likely will be parting ways soon. Kirk Cousins is expected starter for the opening game of the season. In other football news, in spirit of the college football season coming up, every week I'm going to give you my top four teams. 
The top four teams are the teams that make the college football playoffs at the end of the season, so that's why I personally will only give you four, because they're truthfully all that matters. So without further ado, here are the Tomahawk Sports top four college football rankings. Number four, we have the Baylor Bears. And coming in at number three, we have the Alabama Crimson Tide. At number two, the TCU Horn Frogs. And then finally at number one, the undeniable Ohio State Buckeyes. So that's my rankings to start this year. I look forward to showing you more in the coming weeks. But that's it for this week in sports. Once again, I'm Cole Jackson signing off for Tomahawk Sports. Alex Perez is now here to tell us about various video games. Hello, Nokona High School, and welcome to the first video game report. Here we will be reviewing games based off their art style, gameplay, and plot. With that said, let's dive right into our first game, Fable 3. Fable 3 is an older game for Xbox 360 and PC. The game is rated M for mature, so please ask a parent permission before buying this game. Fable 3 is a classic hack and slash RPG that places you in the shoes of the prince or princess of Albion. The game has a very cartoonish art style, giving the fantasy feel a real presence in the game. Another major point of the game is how you are led to your objective. Instead of letting you explore the world to find your next objective, you are instead led to objective to, from objective to objective. This helps if you get lost, but the trail tends to follow, fall off and disappear at certain points. The combat in this game is sometimes hard to control, but it's really rewarding when pulled off. Although the game does not give you that much weapons, it does give you a very extensive customization of the weapons, including swords, hammers, guns, and magic. The game also bases the plot off the choices you make in the game. Every evil decision leads you to the tyrant ending, while every good decision leads you to the guardian ending. Now, for the plot. The story consists of your brother, the king, has gone mad with power and has corrupted the land you live in. You, as the hero, must overthrow him by gaining allies and gaining the trust of the people of the land. But you learn that life as the ruler of Albion is not as easy as it seems, for you must make choices that the right choice may not always be the easy one. Fable 3 is a game you should play if you love games like Skyrim or Dragon Age and it's easy to get into for more casual players. So next time you're looking for a new game, be sure to put Fable 3 on your list. This has been Alex with Gaming Report. Wow, what a great review. See you next time, Alex. Now for the Redneck Consumer Reports, brought to you by Austin and Trayton. August, you stuck watching. Wishing you could be with us, cause the party poppin'. You say you can dig, man, we ain't seen nothing. Your girl wanna be with us, now I heard she said she want a mud digger. Welcome to the very first edition of Country Kid Consumer Report with Trayton and Austin. Today we'll be talking to Brian Blair about his lifted pickup. So what all have you done to your truck? Well, whenever I first bought it, I went and got some 18x10 uh, XD Series Badlands. Then I leveled the front. After that, I put a 5.5 inch Rough Country lift kit on it. And then I put 35 inch tires. I've smoked the taillights and put stickers on the window. Was the lift complicated to put on? Well, it wasn't that complicated. It was just really time consuming. It took me two days just for the front and then about two or three hours for the rear. Where did you get your wheels and tires? Uh, I found them on Craigslist. They had a set of 33s on there and I went and got a set of 35s after I put the lift on. Tune in next week for another edition of Country Kick Simmer Reports. Dig not! knew that so much work could go into a lift kit. Thanks guys. Now for a look at your weekly weather. It looks like it's going to be another hot week for us. And now, last but not least, we would like to introduce you to a new and hilarious segment where we reenact events from the previous week. This week is a reenactment by Zach Boyd and Connor Barrett for the first day of school assembly. Yeah. 
County. The number one. <laughs> Number one! <laughs> First or last, baby! <laughs> First or last! Now for the important stuff from Miss Wright. Thanks, Go Daddy, but I don't need the microphone. You're gonna need the microphone because you're not loud enough. Oh, trust me, I'm loud enough. Oh, uh, no, you're not. <clears throat> I'm like dynamite! Pow! Sorry. Okay. I'm finished now. Well, um, I'm gonna use the microphone because it's kind of a big deal. I cannot wait to see more skits. It is a funny addition to the Tomahawk TV news. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Have a great school year. We hope to see you back next week. Tomahawk TV news. Montague County's only newscast coming at you from Nocona High School.